A public inquiry has concluded that an unarmed suspect shot dead by police as he waited to help two people escape from a prison van was lawfully killed. The 28-year-old from Tottenham in North London was part of a group that tried to free two inmates from a security van near Woodgreen Crown Court in December 2015. But speaking after the findings were published, Jermaine's mother disagreed with the judge. I cannot agree with the judge's conclusion that, Jim, that Jermaine did not die as a result of these failures. That is a conclusion that I cannot understand and the judge has not explained why he has drawn that conclusion. After seven years of waiting and two months of evidence, we deserve more. We've instru I have instructed my legal team to advise me regarding the options of challenging the aspects of the conclusion by the way of the judicial review. We know Jermaine was unarmed. Jermaine complied with the instruction to put his hands up in the air. Jermaine's hands were in the air. We know this from the forensic evidence. Jermaine was surrendering. Jermaine could not have done more to save his life. Well, guys, Sadia Chowdhury is in central London for us. And Sadia, uh, why did the judge decide that he was therefore killed lawfully? Well, the chairman of the inquiry uh, attempted to explain why he thought this was a lawful killing, looking at those uh, seconds and moments before the officer, who is only known by the cipher W80, uh, fired his weapon. He said that he believed that at the time the officer, W80, genuinely believed that uh, Jermaine Baker uh, uh, was ignoring his instructions. So uh, W80 has said in his evidence that he had uh, instructed Jermaine Baker to put his hands on the dash or the dashboard, uh, but instead Jermaine Baker's hands were reaching upwards towards uh, a bag that he was wearing. And he said that he believed that he could have been going for a weapon there. Now, the family's counsel told the inquiry uh, that they thought that putting your hands up is a, na a natural thing to do when you see a police officer approach you with a weapon. And they quizzed uh, W80 on this during the inquiry. And there was a, a, an exchange that we'd heard in the inquiry where they uh, asked why he didn't wait until he saw a weapon actually being withdrawn before firing. And he said he was uh, worried that Jermaine Baker's actions would uh, uh, trump his reaction to that. Um, the chairman also specified 24 separate uh, specific failings in relation to the planning and execution of this Operation Anchor, which was, uh, as you say, the, the conspiracy that's being described as a conspiracy uh, by Jermaine Baker and the two others who were in the car to break this prisoner out. He said that they had enabled the plot to proceed, the officers had enabled the plot to proceed and not inform the court staff or the officers driving the prison van. Uh, and they said that had allowed there to be a risk to their safety. And had they done that, they said that the van could have taken a different route, for example. They said, they also, uh, he also said that they had not shared the details of their plan with the prison governor. Had they done that, then the, prison, the, then the prisoner that was uh, subject to being uh, taken out could have been moved to a different prison, a more higher security prison, uh, where uh, Belmarsh Prison, which is connected by an underground tunnel to Woolwich Crown Court, and so there wouldn't have been a threat uh, of escaping. He m listed a whole range of failures in record keeping, so minutes of meetings weren't taken. He said risk assessments were meaningless. Witness, uh, one witness he described as singularly unimpressive. He said they didn't obtain legal advice. Uh, he said one officer's evidence was wholly contradictory, he said to another's slapdash approach to potentially, if not actually, important information. And he described uh, their attitude towards formality as dismissive and arrogant. He also said that their determination to achieve a successful outcome for uh, Operation Anchor was bordering at times on the obsessive. Um, and very crucially, he said that there was no firearm in the vehicle that Jermaine Baker uh, was in. And he said that W80, the officer who discharged his weapon, uh, wasn't aware of that, hadn't been briefed properly. He had attended a briefing, and I'll read out to you a little bit about what he said following that briefing. So this is the officer, W80. He said, at the end of this briefing, my state of mind was that the attack was likely to happen and that it would be undertaken by a group of experienced and dangerous individuals who would be armed and would use firearms in the course uh, of the offence. 
Now, W80 is still a serving Metropolitan Police Officer, and he's going through a series of court hearings uh, to defend himself against charges of misconduct. But the judge, the former judge in this said that had Jermaine Baker not been fatally shot, then all of these failings would, would not have uh, come out and this operation would have been deemed a success. He said these fail failings should, be, uh, should form a loud wake-up call for the incoming uh, Metropolitan Police Commissioner, who of course hasn't been appointed uh, yet.